Hey guys, Alex here with the AJ Nashville Podcast. Hey, I just want to take a moment and thank our sponsors. House on the Rock Home Inspection with Dave Ganatra. You can feel free to reach his team at 615-717-7900. Let me tell you, when it comes to protecting your greatest asset that you ever purchase, Dave's got you covered. Builders fear this man. Feel free to reach out to his team. Once again, 615-717-7900. Next on our great list of sponsors is the Rap Lab. Any type of printed marketing that you're looking for, maybe it's a wrap on your vehicle, maybe it's a new logo design for your new company, reach out to Rich at the Wrap Lab. Let him know I sent you 615-913-0372. Hey guys, Alex here, AJNashville.com, here with Jeffrey Perry. Say hi, Jeff. Hi, Hi, Jeff. Jeff. Wouldn't expect anything less from you. It's actually funny that you do that because it, it... is something similar to what my kids would do, which like they copy or mock me. And that happens to be what today's podcast is actually about. Kids, crazy kids. Happy birthday to my son, Lincoln. He turned two on the fifth. I almost said five on the second. (laughs) My mind's all screwed up. Of course, I was out of town for work. I was at a manager's meeting in Houston. But the nice thing is, is he's two years old. He doesn't know what day it is. Yeah, You know, I could be like, your birthday's not till next year. And he'd be like, okay, cool. But... Obviously, we're not doing that. We're having a little get together for him tonight, so I'm going to be leaving a little bit early, have some hamburgers, you know, hang out with the family. Uh, he got some really cool presents. You know, I got him anything that he's kind of begged for. I was like, well, let me just go ahead and get this for him. But I did get him a tool set, which was kind of cool yeah. because he likes to play with little tools. Which brings me to the disaster that took place in my house last night. I got to hear this one. Yeah, there's a little drill, like a toy drill thing. And first of all, I had to come all the way back to the office to get AA batteries. I know she came in the office. I was like, I think Alex has been here. I have. I usually, like, one thing you can never have enough of as a parent is batteries. And it's always something that throws you off. You know, like, they got a toy not too long ago that took C batteries. I'm like, I haven't seen a C battery in, like, 25 years. Yeah. So I had to go hunt one down. And then I got them these walkie-talkies, and they take 9-volt batteries. And I'm like, the only place I know of with the 9 volts my smoke detectors. So I had to go find a 9-volt battery. And literally, there's like 7,000 different battery brands and types there. There was only two different 9-volt ones, the expensive ones and the really expensive ones. <laughs> so they got the cheap, expensive ones. So anyways, they get to fighting over this drill. I mean, you would think it was like the last drill in the world. Rowan doesn't realize it's his present. She wants to fight over it, and it's bang out, knocked down, like throwing fists, pulling hair, you know, anything you can think of. We eventually had to hide it from him. It was that bad. So it it got me to think, though, about, you know, when I was, when Rowan, when she was born and preparation and everything else, you know, people have babies every day and it's not like these kids come with an instruction manual. It's not like the doctor's like, here you go, here's your child, boom, here's a book, read this, do this, you're good. You mean they don't have that? Like there's nothing you can do? I wish there was a blueprint. There's shit that kids do that's not even like, newer kids are just doing it. It's not even normal, you know? And you panic. Anything that goes wrong with your kids, like... You know, when te- when kids start teething, they get a temperature. Do you know how many times we went to the ER because Rowan had a temperature? Mm-mm. Shannon would be like, I'd be like, what's the temperature? Oh, it's 100 degrees. I'm like, we're going to the ER right now. Jump in the car, roll out to the ER. They're like, it's normal. They're teething. I'm like, all right, whatever. Did they tell you this when you leave the hospital? Like when your kid they runs, do. A, runs a temperature, always rush them to, to the ER? No, they don't say rush them to the ER. They'd rather you not take them to the ER. And I'm sure the insurance company would rather you not take them as well. But... It's not until those things pop up that you think about asking them. Like, Rowan and Lincoln have always been to the pediatrician. They go for their checkups. Lincoln just had a checkup today. You know, and they tell you things. So each kid has its own little different thing. And Mm -hmm. so they tell you, they're like, hey, look out for this, do this, do that. You know, if their temperature gets to X, then you want to do Y and Z. And me, I'm like, I pay for insurance. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z all at once, you know, as opposed to doing it in bits and pieces like they would rather us do it. But like I said, kids don't come with a manual. So before Rowan was born, I was like, I have to have heated wipes. You know, they make these little containers and you put the wipes in and it warms them up and it's supposed to be nice on their bottom and everything else. Hey, can we get those in the office? We can, but you don't wipe your ass anyway. (laughs) So what's the point? (laughs) You know, and and you, you have to do this formula and you can't do milk. And then as they get a little bit older, you feed them this and you got to teach them that. And it's just, it's so overwhelming when it's your first kid. You know, and you're like, oh, my God, what is what am I going to do? And like I said, this happens on a regular basis. There's so many people I know. There's my buddy Brett, him and his wife, beautiful daughter. 
you know, he's a new parent. He's never had a kid before. And that's, I told him, I said, prepare, because it's going to be fun. <laughs> he runs a business and he has a new baby girl, you know, which is, I asked him flat out, I said, did you cry? Because every man, it doesn't matter, matter how hard you are. You know, when the first baby is born and the doctor's like, hey, come cut this umbilical cord. First, you're like, gross. Yeah. And then it, it like hits you in the feel goods. And you're like, oh, this is mine. You know, at least good fathers. <laughs> and so, you're looking at me like, huh? And I'm yeah, looking you at you like with a blank look. You have no idea because <laughs> you've never been there before. But you do. You cut the umbilical cord and there's a diff. It's like your whole life is different from that point on. And the only thing you want to do is protect that little baby. And you don't know how. That's a scary thing. Like the nurse is like, hey, we're going to hold on to the baby. You know, we'll bring her in and bring her out for the first couple nights. And then we're kicking you out on the street and you're good to go. And literally it's like That's that. really how it is? Pretty much, yeah. You have the baby. <laughs> they come in. They're like, this is how you feed it. This is how you change its diaper. Which, dude, when I changed Rowan's diaper for the first time, like I looked like I was getting ready to rob somebody. I had the the uh, blanket wrapped around my face because it, it's horrid. Like the first couple bowel movements out of a baby is just – you're like, what the fuck is that? It's just, it's something else. And so I wrapped my face up and did all this crazy stuff. And I'm trying to learn. And it's easier because they don't move a whole lot. You know, they're, they're not squirming and doing all that. They're new. They just lay on their back. And so the next thing you wait for is them to open their eyes and smile. And like, you're like, yes, you know, it smiled at me. And it, it's looking at me. It sees me. Babies can't see very far when they're first born. And then it just progresses, and it's just a matter, you know, you have to ask people, hey, what did you do when I was a baby? Or, you know, what did you do? Or you just ask groups of people, and you get advice, and some of it's really good, and some of it's really, really bad. You know, some people are like, when you're teaching your baby to stay in its room by itself, you know, you have to let it cry for a little bit, and then you come in there and comfort it, and then you let it cry a little bit longer, then you come in there and comfort it. And that sounds really good. Except the front part of my house always sounded like somebody was getting murdered because the baby's like, Wah! you know, and you can hear it outside the house. I'm like, all right, it's been three hours now. Should we go back in there and check to make sure he's still doing good or he's still <laughs> screaming, you know, or she's still screaming? It hadn't been that long, but it's nerve wracking. And then as a parent, you want to do nothing but cuddle and swaddle these kids and kind of and be good to them. And it hurts you to hear them cry and then they get spoiled. Like I remember being young and and there was no, hey, you get stuff that we can't afford. You know, yeah. it was, you don't, and that's it. And it was tough love. And I remember being younger and, and thinking, well, why can't I have this? With my kids, my goal is to give them whatever it was I couldn't have. That's a very bad thing to do, you know, because kids get spoiled and they get spoiled fast. Like, for example, fighting over the drill, you know, it's a toy drill. It's battery operated. But you would have thought it was the best thing on earth, these two little kids fighting over it, them wanting to go outside, them not listening. You know, all those are teaching and growing moments for parents and children. It teaches you how to be very, very patient with people in general. I've noticed a big change in you. Yeah. I mean, Rowan's going to be four in February. Yeah. You know, so I've spent all this time. You've done well, though. Because, you know, I, I've, I've watched my friends have kids, you know, that, well, not watch them actually have, fits, you know what I mean, though. Yeah. And like you've been there when they were yeah, crowning. No, no. You're like, no, push, no, push. Nope. <laughs> but, you know, I've watched you deal with it from the beginning. I remember the time when we were working at Reliance and they, I remember um, the specific baby carriages and things like that, that you were having to buy and purchase and all this kind of oh, stuff, yeah. the stuff that was coming through and you're buying the best this and the best that. And all. Yeah. I remember those days. And, um, it's crazy though, because you like with Rowan, you know, her, her bedroom suit, quote unquote suit, you know, yeah. was something that like, she didn't need it. Yeah. She could have been laying on just a regular old mattress pad and or not mattress pad, but regular old sheets and stuff, and she would have been fine. Mm -hmm. She didn't know that she had this carousel designed, you know, blanket with her name on it and everything else. Like none of that shit mattered to her. No, that's a parent thing. It is. It really is. But as the kids progress and they get older, it's more like, All right, well, does anybody have a blanket? That's a cool thing about kids' clothes and stuff. You know somebody that will give you you know, old clothes or things like that. And, and it, it, on the surface, you're like, ah, I'm not going to give my kids secondhand clothes. Buy your kids a bunch of clothes and then tell me that you won't give them some secondhand shit because you're going to be like, my bank account, see the way that works? Uh, we can't be buying this new stuff for them all the time. So, you know, it, 
Lincoln has – well, no, Lincoln's got a sheet with his name on it. It says Lincoln, and it's funny because where the I is dotted, he – for a while he thought it was a bug. Mm-hmm. And so you'd hear him over the baby monitor. He'd be like, bug, bug, and he says it just like that, you know. And we'd go in there and be like, where, where? He's like, bug, and he'd be pointing at the sheet. And we're like, there's no bug there. <laughs> and one day Shana was like, you know he thinks that dot on the I is a bug, right? And I'm like, really? No, he's not that stupid. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't think that. But it's funny because that's that's how they are. You know, they get freaked out over little stuff, but they don't they don't need the the sheet with their name on it. Like you said, that's a parent thing. And the crazy thing is, it's not like people come in the house and we're like, "Hey, come here, come check what out." What kind Lincoln's of blanket room. do you have? Yeah, let, let me see, see your mattress. His his sheet. They say Lincoln on them. Don't you think that's cute? Like for us, it's just like uh, it's so important. It's kind of like dressing kids up. I myself, whatever Rowan's willing to put on that day is what she's wearing. Shannon is more like, <laughs> I'm dead serious. If I can get on anything, I could put on a Chewbacca shirt with damn My Little Pony pants on her. And if she's cool with that, let's roll. Shannon's like, no, you're going to wear this, you're going to wear this, and you're going to wear these shoes. And I'm like, whatever. I don't even care if she wears shoes at this point. you know. But we have very different levels of patience. Like, I'm more patient than I was before, but oh, yeah. it's, it's difficult to be patient after a while when you can resolve the whole situation. Because I, I look at it like this. If I'm walking in Target or the mall or Starbucks or whatever, and somebody looks and I'm like, golly, what would they put on that kid? If they're not a parent, they're probably thinking that and saying, golly, what would they put on? That, that person's trash or whatever. If they're a parent, they're like, wow, they got them out of the house. That's cool. And they got their clothes on. That's even better. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, look at all the accomplishments right here. Yeah. Like parents understand the struggle. They're like, okay, cool. They got them dressed and they got them out of the house and they're still alive. You know, (laughs) dude, you got to watch for kids. Kids run out to the road and shit. Yeah. Like Lincoln will full sprint off and and start running towards the road. I'm like, whoa, stop. Well, and, and that's funny that you say that because I think I might have had that conversation with you one time. Why do kids always gravitate towards the road? I think it's because it's where they're not supposed to go. And they do this because it's not just it, – it's, it's all it's kids. It's all kids. It's all, yeah. ki- all little kids always gravitate right towards the, the brink of danger. Because some- they're not supposed to be there and they know that. Like when – so you know the, the – um, Tundra that I got for the kids that Rich at the Rap Lab, he wrapped it mm-hmm. to match my truck yeah. and did all that stuff. They will not drive that thing on the sidewalk. Like, I've, I've tried to get them to drive it on the sidewalk. They want to drive it on the road. And I get it. It's a car. Cars are supposed to be on the road. But it's a little car. You know, now I've got them to the point, though, if they see a car coming down the street, they completely stop. And we stay towards the curb. And the, that section of my neighborhood is not very busy anyway. No, so they're, not, yeah. they're fine doing that. But you're right. They always want to go in there. Um, Saturday, I came back from Houston. I went to go pick up Lincoln at Shannon's mom's house, and he's riding a scooter, a motorized scooter. And this dude is figure eighting throughout the house. And he comes into the kitchen, and I swear his head is like two inches away from the end of the countertop, and I'm freaking out. And he does it like 10 more times, exact same distance. I'm like, dude, you're a psycho, yeah. you know? And he is rolling. And here's the thing I try to get a picture of this. So. He's coming towards me, and I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm facing him as he's coming towards me. And while he's coming towards me, he's mean mugging me the whole time. He's not looking (laughs) straight. He's looking at me. And he passes me mean mugging me, like to the point where he's looking back at me like, what's up, dude? You going to do something? (laughs) And every time he came around, it was the same thing every time. And I'm like, dude, you're going to hurt yourself. Or when you're not looking at your cart, I'm going to throw something in front of it if you keep staring at me like that, (laughs) you know? (laughs) It's it, dude. It's just it's hilarious when it comes to these kids. And Lincoln is a is a daredevil. Lincoln will climb on shit that's not supposed to be climbed on. Like, you know, in my house, I have that really narrow um, cabinet where the kids' shoes and stuff are in. That's it's right over there by the thermostat. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? He climbs up on that. I'm like, dude, that thing's like a foot wide, and you climb up on that. And I don't know what he's why he's doing it. He climbs up on the island. Him and Rowan were on top of the dining room table the other day. I put Lincoln because they were fighting over his scooter. Remember the scooter that we put together? Yeah, yeah. They were fighting over it. That's the other thing, too. As a parent, and I always ask you this, how in the mm-hmm. world do you learn how to figure out all the little items? So a car seat, for me, is a complete challenge to get in and out. You know, because I always ask you, hey, man, can you get this? I can't. I don't even know how to unlock the damn thing. It's because you're not a parent. <clears throat> okay. And then we put the scooter together that came in a box with about 50 screws. Mm-hmm. So, you know... 
how, not just not only do you have to figure out how to take care of the child, right? But you have to learn how to put together all this crap. So at that point, <laughs> at that point, you're like, you know what? I figured out childhood and how to take care of kids so far, and how to like, dude, I couldn't keep a plant alive anymore. Now I've kept two human beings alive, you know, for at least two years for one of them, and almost four for the other. But you just kind of figure it out as you go. You know, you you start putting stuff together and things start making sense and you hope for the best. And if you end up with something screwed up, oh, well. But as far as putting the scoot- scooter together, no, I'm just playing. It's the same thing. I mean, you just. <laughs> I was thinking this. <laughs> you, you figure it out as you go, you know, and and you're right. They make those things complex and you get things and it's got weird batteries and you know, you have to put this together and the kids want it now. Like you have to realize, dude, me putting that together here in the office with you and I doing it is much more peaceful than me doing it at home with two kids running around, kicking the screws everywhere. They want half built scooters that have spikes hanging out. Like I figured that's why we did that. Yeah. It's dangerous to do at the house. Like you don't realize in my house, in the living space, we have two power wheels, which they drive around the house two scooters, two tricycles, a picnic table. Like, these are all dangerous items to have in a house. Like, in no world do adult human beings have those things in their house. My like, question is, Dan so Bazzaria you have to get up in the middle house. of the night and go get water in the kitchen? Oh, dude. Is that like at landmines Have all you ever seen American Ninja Warrior? <laughs> no. Okay, so American Ninja Warrior is like where these people go through these obstacle courses and they have to jump over stuff and grab onto stuff. That's how it is being a parent. I mean, those little plastic toys have to hurt if you step on them barefoot. Legos. Legos hurt the worst. Do they? So Lincoln has this little cart. And one morning, um, I was trying to be quiet. I tried to walk out of the bedroom, and it was dark still. And he's got it's like a little shopping cart. And I kicked it on the way out. And you want to talk about making noise. <laughs> I might as well hit a <laughs> gong in the living room. It was like, pow! And so I was like, all right, I don't think I woke anybody up except for myself. And I go into the kitchen, and I get a drink of water and everything, and I'm getting up. I'm getting my day going. I walk back in. Guess what I hit on the way in? Same fucking cart. <laughs> I'm like, pow. So here's what I do. Do you spill your water? No, I, <laughs> I don't bring water in the rooms. No liquids in, in the rooms in my house. Um, but here's what I do. So before I go to bed at night, I clear a path. I literally do this every night. I, it's a danger path. And so I know because I'll get up to use the restroom <laughs> you know, once or twice in the middle of the night. And so I have a path that I know there's nothing between myself and the bathroom. There's no tricycle hanging out. There's no Legos on the floor. There's nothing. It's get up, walk, shift, go, come back, you know, because you're going there, it's pitch black. You can see a little bit, but the second you turn the light on in the bathroom, come back out, you can't see anything. So you have to make sure all the toys are out of the way. So that's what I do. I I create a path every single night. (laughs) Um, And it becomes habit. You know, you have to do things like that, and especially with kids, is you just you figure out a way to get shit done. You know, at the end of the day, my children are everything to me. I would do yeah. a whole lot of crazy shit for my kids. Hopefully I would, not. I would, hopefully not. But yeah. Well, no, I would. There's <laughs> no question about it. Like, but hopefully not. <laughs> you want to see a person do something crazy, fuck with their kids. Yeah. You know? And when I say crazy, I don't mean that they're going to – you mess with their kids and so they're going to go, you know, do something stupid. I mean, if well, you mess Well, that's true with, even in the animal kingdom. I mean, oh, you yeah. look at an animal – if you come near their babies, man, they they flip out. They'll go nuts on you. Well, some animals eat their babies, so yeah, that's, that's pretty gross. It's kind of a bad know. example, but, but you know what I mean. They're like they'll know, protect it till the death. Speaking of eating babies, I know this is off topic, but do you know what I like to do to my fish? I feed them shrimp sometimes, and you know who eats the shrimp? Other shrimp. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> to me, I'm like, gotcha. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, people do some crazy stuff for their kids. You know, that's why you get like nice car seats and everything else, and that's why. You do some of the things, you know, like having my daughter in this morning. That was great. Loved having her in here. Mm-hmm. Um, she's quiet for the most part, but if she was in here for a little bit longer, she would start getting psycho because you tell she was getting restless, like when she was walking to the front, to the back, and everything. It's because they go to daycare and they're busy all day long. Like that's truly the only way to do something with a child to get them to calm down is keep them busy day in and day out and give them the same shit. If Rowan has 12 Cheerios, Lincoln has to have 12. Sometimes he needs to have 11 because she wants more. And you take care of the bigger one because the bigger one beats up on the smaller one. <laughs> you know, I'm, dude, I'm serious. Like I said, they are all out, want to kill each other, want to hurt each other. And then the next thing you know, they're friendly as can be. They're hugging. Yeah. You can tell Lincoln, you'd be like, that hurt her. Stop and say sorry. He says, sorry, Rowan. 
you know, and goes up and gives her a big hug and everything else, and they're fine, and two minutes later, they're fighting again. <laughs> I mean, dude, being a parent's tough. You know, and, and that's a big thing. So us as guys, most of the time, not all the time, but it's kind of been this social norm that the guy does whatever, the wife's at home, takes care of the kids. It's kind of been the way things have been historically. And, you know, as guys, we always think, and once again, I'm not speaking for every person on the planet because I know there's guys out there that take care of the kids and the women are at work and stuff like that. But we take for granted the amount of work that goes into taking care of a child. Like, I've talked to plenty of, of parents now, and the, the mom will be like, you know, I stay at home with the kids and the husband does this. And I'm like, okay, so you got the real job. So what is it that your husband does? Because taking kids care of kids is hard. It's hard work. It's a full-time job. And sometimes a person just needs to exhale and say, I'm not going to kill anyone today. <laughs> like, dude. Can you imagine me with kids? No. You want to talk about motivation? You want a piece of motivation? Have a kid. No. You're not necessarily – not everybody gets motivated to be like, man, I'm motivated now. I got to go and I'm going to bust my ass. People are just motivated to get out of the house before their kids wake up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It'll create some sort of motivation in you. Extreme urgency. You're like, I need to get out of the house before the – like this morning I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, all right, Lincoln's going to wake up any minute now. I need to get out the door before he wakes up. And so I go outside. Like literally you have to think about all this stuff. Yeah. Well, you put it together in your mind because it's like, okay, he's going to wake up. And as soon as he wakes up, it sounds it's exhausting. Game over. Dude, there's nothing about being a parent that isn't exhausting. But like I was saying earlier, the the women that that the stay at home, let me just say that, stay at home parents, they have a real job, dude. That shit's hard. Like to be around little people that don't understand you night and day and to be responsible for them and make sure they don't kill themselves. Kids do dumb shit. Like they try to stick their finger in light sockets. And, you know, most people are like, yeah, but you know, um, if a kid's stupid enough to stick their finger in a light socket, then that's on them. That's not the case. Not when it's your kid. When you're looking at your kid, you're like, please don't hurt yourself. Please don't hurt yourself. And you're doing stupid little shit. Like last night I ordered a bunch of Halloween decorations. Guess who I asked while I was ordering them if it was okay? Take a guess. The kids? Rowan. <laughs> Rowan, what do you think about this ghost? Uh-uh. Guess what didn't get ordered? A ghost. Rowan, what do you think about this kitty cat? Ooh, guess what got ordered? Kitty cat. I mean, that's just what you do because you don't do it for you. I'm not out there like setting up decorations for me. It's for when they get home at night, they can look out the window or they can look as they're driving past and look at the cool stuff in the front yard. Yeah. And that brings them fulfillment, which when they're happy, I'm happy. It's kind of weird how that works. You know, that falls into the toys. You know why we have toys in the living room, power wheels and shit like that? When they're happy, I'm happy. Why do I still have a big fish tank in my hallway? Kids. They love it. If not, I probably would have drained the water out of it fucking months ago because it's so annoying to me anymore. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, being a parent's hard. There's no question about it. Being a stay-at-home parent's even harder. So when you're at your job, wherever it is, and you're traveling, and you're doing whatever it is that you do, don't forget to go home and thank the person that sits there and watch the, watches the children all day and busts their ass because what they're doing is far harder than what we're doing. Like, I think I would have had a heart attack if my job was to stay at home with the kids like a long, long time ago. It's just that crazy. So anyways, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Hopefully we have some fun tonight for Lincoln's birthday. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone has a great week. Kills it. Look out for the podcast on Friday. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to the AJ Nashville podcast. Let me take a second to thank our sponsors, the people that make it possible for me to be in your ears on a week-to-week -week basis. Thanks again for tuning in. House on the Rock Home Inspection with Dave Ganatra. You can feel free to reach his team at 615-717-7900. Let me tell you, when it comes to protecting your greatest asset that you ever purchase, Dave's got you covered. Builders fear this man. Feel free to reach out to his team. Once again, 615-717-7900.